Chris Parsons here from the Happy Healthy Marriage Reset. Today I'm going to give you three steps to save your marriage. Then I'm going to tell you why that's a terrible idea and what to do instead. So three steps to save your marriage. Step one is to accept all the blame. Tell them that everything is your fault. You are the problem. They did not contribute in any way to any of the issues in the marriage and that there is absolutely nothing that they could have done differently. You are the only one who has contributed to the marriage reaching this point. Step two is to beg, plead, guilt trip, and manipulate them into staying. Use every psychological manipulation tactic you can think of to get them to stay. Don't care about whether you're happy. Don't care about whether they're happy. Just manipulate them into staying. Step three is to promise that things will be different. So you're going, whatever it is that they're upset about, you promise that you will never do that again. You promise that you will be 100% perfect. You will not have any flaws. You will never make any mistakes. And you will do everything that they ask as soon as they ask. When they say jump, you say how high. You promise that you will cook, clean, pick up after them, do everything everything for them to make their life as absolutely easy and comfortable as possible and they don't have to do or change a single thing. That's the three steps. That's it. You want to save your marriage? You're going to accept all the blame. You're going to beg, plead, argue, guilt trip them into staying. And then you're going to promise that you're going to be perfect and make all the changes that they want. Now, you still with me? I hope you can see the problem here. There's a good chance you've already tried these three steps and they don't work. They don't ever work. But I have to clarify, they do often work in the short term for a little while until you can't uphold those promises because you're not perfect, because you have flaws, because you make mistakes, because you're not willing to live in a situation where your needs, your happiness, and your feelings are not important. Now, I watched a woman go through this 10 years ago. She dragged her husband who wanted a divorce to a marriage retreat and she begged him to stay, actually to come back, and promised she would do everything that he wanted. And instead of taking a couple months to grieve, to, to be sad, and then to move forward with her life, she's been crying every single day for a decade because she hates her life. She's lost her relationships with her kids, with her grandkids, with her friends, because her husband has to come first in everything, and she isn't allowed to have any uh, relationships or priorities outside of him. And so if you ask me, that's a terrible deal. That's a terrible deal. And... Honestly, it wasn't her only choice anyway. She could have reset her marriage to be happy and healthy. She still can. But she has to deal with the fear of losing him. She has to deal with the fear of moving on without him in order to make that change. She has to raise her standards to recognize that she really is unhappy and so if she is afraid that she will be unhappy without him, what is keeping him doing for her? She's already there. She's worse off now than if she had moved on without him, much less if she had actually 
learned the skills and reset her marriage. And that's why I do not help people to save their marriages because what's the point? My highest value is joy and fulfillment in life. That's what I would encourage your highest value to be as well. What are you doing to reach a higher level of more joy, more connection, more fulfillment in your life? And your marriage is the biggest part of your life that serves that. And so the Happy Healthy Marriage Reset is about understanding why do marriages get to this point where things are so toxic, so disconnected, and so unhappy? And it's teaching you the skills and the understanding of what to do so that you can reset your marriage to be happy and healthy. Because without a happy, healthy marriage, why bother? Why, why would you want to be married to someone that doesn't want to be married to you, that doesn't care about your feelings, that doesn't value you, right? It, it serves no purpose. It's not sanctifying you. It's not your cross to bear, to be miserable. It's just miserable. So instead of trying or wanting to save your marriage, what I would encourage you to do is read and implement the Happy Healthy Marriage Reset. It's going to tell you what you need to know, what, what you do to change the trajectory and the dynamic of your marriage for more intimacy, for more connection, for more love, more passion, more happiness in your home. Now, I want to tell you briefly, I had a client who came in and she said, well, I agree that, you know, it, it's always a two-way street. Both people are always a part of allowing things to get to that point. But in my case, I really was the one to blame. I said, okay, all right, well, tell me more. And she said, well, my husband knows everything in the book already. He already understands healthy boundaries. He already knows how to communicate, etc." I said, okay, well, you know, let's get into this. And as we're talking, she says, well, yes, he did get, you know, extremely aggressive sometimes. Well, and he was a Marine. Well, yes, he did speak to me like I was a Marine barking commands, telling me what to do. Well, no, he didn't ever accept responsibility that he could have done anything different. He didn't apologize. He didn't do the things that are in the actual book. He didn't use the tools. He knew about them. He knew the words, but he didn't know how to use them. And so, it was not all of her fault. Now, was she doing things wrong? Was, were there aspects of things that she needed to learn and grow and improve on? Absolutely. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that he has no responsibility and no part in allowing the relationship to get to the point that it did. In fact, the biggest thing that he did was pretend that things were okay the next day, right? Even though he was building resentment. He's getting hurt. He's getting upset. But the next day, it's fine, whatever, it's in the past. So the issues were always swept under the rug and not dealt with. And that is not a success for, a, a formula for success. It's a formula for hurt and bitterness, and the only way forward from there is to accept your responsibility, own your power, that you can change things. You can do things better. You can develop the skills to have a happy, healthy marriage. You can raise your standards to no longer be willing to settle for how your spouse treats you, for what they do, for accepting all the blame. 
and you can reset your marriage to be happy and healthy. And that is what I would encourage you to do if your highest value is your joy and fulfillment. Now, if your highest value is the comfort and the quote unquote security of marriage, then that's what you're going to end up with. You'll, it's really not secure at all, as many people will tell you when they find out their spouse has been having an affair, when their spouse surprises them by telling them that they want a divorce or telling them that they're done, right? Because when you're unhappy, they cannot be happy. And so when you're allowing your marriage to make you deeply unhappy, they're not going to be fulfilled. They're going to start looking around at what the other options are. This is human nature. We all do it. When a marriage is no longer serving us, we start thinking, right? The, the one big question everybody's asking themselves, how can I be happier? And so that means that you have to reset your marriage to be happy and healthy in order for them to want to work through things, to want to be on the same team as you, to work through and problem solve the issues that come up, because issues will come up, and to rebuild the love, trust, connection, and passion for one another. All right, my friends.